Hello, my name is Talhani and uh, today I will be presenting my PE102 final term project. Uh, actually, the thing is that I have made traffic surveillance system. Uh, here is my overall model. This is what my overall model looks like. And I am using two breadboards in which I have uh, states of LEDs at the moment. And this is basically my road model. Uh, road model. And I have used two IR sensors to control the states of my LEDs. Of course, I have used bases, my VGA, and I have this OV7670 camera. Before implementing my project, I would like to introduce you to some of the important digital components and my sensors that I will be using for implementation of my project. One of the important digital components that I will be using for my project is this IR sensor or infrared sensor and uh, it detects uh, any object that is very close to it by using infrared radiations and it detects an object with a certain range and that range can be controlled by a screwdriver uh, if you uh, just uh, screw this around you can uh, control the range of this sensor for this experiment I will be using it for 4 cm that is approximately up till here it is also worth mentioning that this is an active low Sen a sensor which means that it has a constant uh, output of V1 uh, if it hasn't detected any object and if it detects an object that state changes to zero constantly and uh, it has three ports one is the VCC connection that is the positive power supply and the other is the ground connection and the third one is the output and I will be using two of them to control the FSM states of my traffic lights Okay, the most important digital component that I will be using in my project is this OV7670 camera and I will use this to show the constant video output on the VGA screen and therefore I will have to do a lot of video and image processing without worrying about the camera interface. This camera uh, captures the data, data at 30 frames per second and it gives the output in three steps. Before uh, that, I would like to mention that it has 18 uh, inputs that, that have been connected with the jumper wire. The first two ones are the power supply and ground. The other, the next two are for uh, capturing the data, uh, capturing the data and configuring the camera. And then we have the clock signals, again the clock signals, and the last two ones are reset and power down. The rest of them are the data inputs. As I mentioned that the camera gives output in three steps, so here are the three steps. First of all, we, will, we need to configure the camera. For that, uh, the uh, input SIOC, I don't know if it is visible or not, but this second input is uh, necessary for configuration of the camera. To configure it, we need an I2C code and get the image data. For the, uh, And we get the image data by the uh, SIOD input that is uh, in the second uh, input from uh, the top and uh, we basically can uh, capture the image data for which we need necessary data using the timing signals for example p clock mm, the p clock signals and the vga signals uh, these are the necessary things to capture the data after we have configured the camera and captured the data the next step is to save the data in a frame buffer but the problem with the uh, basis is that uh, it cannot uh, store 640 into 480 resolution of the uh, captured image data uh, in its BRAM so the trick is to capture one pixel every four pixel so this not only reduces the uh, captured image data by four times but it also helps us to transfer the data at a much faster rate after we have made a frame buffer we have uh, to use IP catalog of Vivado to create a new frame buffer with a 17-bit address to achieve this task of reducing the uh, size of the data. Okay, so uh, it works on the basis of uh, those two LEDs that I have just mentioned. So suppose uh, this is the road for uh, the cars and this is the railway track. So this is my train. As soon as uh, my train comes, what just watch the state of my LEDs. As soon as the train comes to my first IR sensor, we can see that uh, the red lights has been signaled on the road cautioning them that they should stop as soon as the train comes to my second sensor we can see that uh, on the railway we have been signaled green so the train can pass however the cars on the main road should stop as, soon as my train moves on uh, it will pass my first sensor and we have the signal of warning on the railway track and on 
uh, here it is still red. As soon as the train passed my IR sensor, we have a go signal on the road and the stop signal of the train on the railway track. And we can see everything uh, that is being uh, presented by the camera on, on the VGA screen. This is my road LEDs. These are my, uh, the LEDs of uh, railway. And those two are my sensors that were presented over there. So this is mainly all my project. Now I will show you my schematics. Uh, this is how overall my schematic looks like. And this part is... So as you can see, this lower part is basically how my traf traffic uh, lights are controlled. It works on the basis of FSM that uh, I have uh, in my VHDL code. And this uh, traffic system is basically not connected by any, in any sort of way from the camera. Now let me show you the schematic of camera. This part is the schematic of my camera, the one that I've actually zoomed in now. I have you. Uh, I have actually eight uh, modules for uh, describing this uh, uh, my camera, and I have two multiplexers that are basically the select statements of my uh, button. You can see them. Here is my uh, select statements. These actually describe the uh, multiplexers that I have uh, used over here. Now I will show you how my. Uh, uh, multiplexer works. I have assigned two buttons on my basis, the left and right. As soon as I, as soon as I press my, as soon as I press my left button, you can see the resolution. It has changed on the screen. This is 16 into uh, 16 to 16 uh, pixels, and as soon as I, as soon as I press uh, the right button, you can see the resolution. This is 320 into 240. So the basic part of my project was to uh, display how actually the traffic surveillance system works in real life. I hope now you have the basic idea how traffic system is basically implemented in the real life. That's all. Thank you very much for watching.